Okay, as usual, um, I screwed up with the camera, so I missed, uh, I, I kept on, I continued on and uh, got this pump down here and installed, so I just pulled it back off to show you guys how I do this. Um, we have grease on the um, spot of the drive shaft where the, the, um, where the uh, key goes. We got our key oriented the right way. We double checked, made sure that uh, that the uh, fat part of the key is going to intersect with the with the fat portion of the uh, of the impeller where the uh, keyway is on it. Okay, um, get a screwdriver, and we're going to hold this key on our way. Once we get down to there, we're going to hold the key in place with a screwdriver. The grease will keep it there, but you got to hold it in place to make sure it doesn't get knocked out while you're pushing the pump down on it. So. This is going to cooperate with me again. There we go. Okay. Now it's in place. We got gasket sealer on the base of the gear case. On um, then we put our our um, wear plate gasket down. Then we put gasket sealer on top of the wear plate gasket. Then we put the wear plate down. We put a gasket sealer on top of the wear plate, and then the water pump housing assembly is in place. We'll finger tighten our screws. And I found my grease that was sitting right here the whole time. Here I am complaining about people taking my stuff, which happens all the time. But uh, in this case, it was, uh, it was me. Can't be perfect all the time, right? Okay. Once we get these, uh, once we get these uh, making contact, and, and we're going to snug corner to corner, opposing corners. Uh, you don't need to, you don't need to tighten them that much. It's only like uh, 80 inch pounds, so it uh, doesn't require a, a heck of a lot of um, torque. And due to the fact that we have the patch screws in there with that little patch of uh, thread sealant thread locker and also we have covered our screws in the gasket sealer as well and um, what that does is uh, and if I'm being redundant pardon me but it um, it takes up all the, sp the, the space inside the screw hole so water can't get down in there and then leave salt deposits um, we do that on almost every screw that comes in contact with water uh, on uh, on these motors. You either cover them with grease, a good high quality thick grease like the Triple Guard. It's a waterproof grease, or or gasket sealer. Gasket sealer works great. Um, another thing that I went ahead and did, and uh, I need to make sure you guys are aware of this, is on the uh, outlet of our water pump housing. We have the um, the outlet adapter here. I went ahead and had all this put together. Down inside, down inside this housing is a uh, is a grommet. Now this grommet is tapered. It's a uh, it's you can see that um, it's thin on this side, about maybe a sixteenth of an inch, and it's thick on this side, maybe closer to an eighth of an inch and it's conical down inside there so when the water tube goes in it uh, fits nice and neatly and snug inside that uh, inside that tapered portion the the, uh, the cone needs to be like this so when you put it in there and your water pump tube goes down in there um, the, the conical portion needs to be facing up so we put that into place then we uh, this uh, grommet it comes with uh, comes with your kit this is your drive shaft grommet this seals the drive shaft to the midsection and uh, prevents water from uh, from um, coming up the drive shaft uh, hole and then getting up in there and washing your uh, washing your crankshaft out and uh, washing the grease out of it and uh, eventually freezing your uh, your drive shaft and crankshaft together which does happen uh, so Okay, when you, when you put this on there, it's, um, 
it's got a, uh, there's a little space in between it and the drive shaft. Just center it out in there. Make sure that uh, it's not rubbing against the drive shaft. You want to do this last once you get the, uh, once you get the housing in place and everything's in place down on the, uh, down on the gear case. Do this, uh, do this last because if you do it before you put it down on there, chances are you're going to have to readjust it to center it out in, in the drive shaft itself. So then we have, uh, then we have this grommet, and what this grommet does is this grommet intersects with the water tube, and then this portion is conical. See that um, the water tube goes down through here, and then this uh, seals up against the um, the the midsection, the lower portion of the midsection, to keep um, to keep water from getting up in there. And uh, we've got this guy. This is another seal portion on here. Um, it's got a hole in it for a key weight, and there's a little key-looking uh, um, portion of your uh, outlet on the water pump right there. So put this guy, align that with the key. Push that down there, and then we'll push this on here. And, and then uh, the uh, this grommet will go onto the outside of that and it, uh, it helps hold it into place. Okay, so all on the outside and we'll push down on it. And that's it. Uh, now we're going to measure our shift rod height. Um, one thing you might want to do when you take your gear case out, if you don't have the manual on these things, then it's kind of hard sometimes to find uh, find shift rod height is when you initially pull this thing out, put it into neutral. And once you get it into neutral, measure from the base of the case up to the hole. And it doesn't matter where you measure off of, as long as you know in your mind where you measured off of. In the book, they give us uh, certain readings, and we have to measure straight up um, with a perpendicular rod or ruler and uh, and a, a, and a pointer that runs over to the center of the hole. That's how we get them. But uh, you just need to measure and see where the center of your hole or your shift rod is once you initially take your gear case out. Make sure that you do it in, in, in neutral. Um, you can do it in, in forward or in reverse. Just make sure you do it the same way twice. Um, just make sure that your shift rod does not uh, change in adjustment because the adjustment on the shift rod is turning it turning it in or turning it out. If for some reason it does get screwed up, one of our rule of thumbs is, and um, don't, uh, I mean, we, we do it as a rule of thumb. It's a lot of times you have to, like, yeah, you have to readjust it. But if you screw it all the way in, back it out six turns, five and a half to six turns, it usually ends up right. But uh, you may end up having to drop the gear case and doing some adjustment on it if you're not getting the, the proper shift uh, from your control to um, relay to your gear case. So, that's about it. Um, we're going to put our molly lube on the top of the drive shaft here. So when we put our gear case in, um, it's, uh, you know, it's lubricated up there. What I always do is I get the gear case in place, I'll put one screw in it. Then I'll connect the shift rod. Once I get the shift rod connected, then I'll put the rest of my screws in it. That's just so in case this thing spins and you've got to drop the gear case back out or um, it, it doesn't go up the uh, right portion or it ends up in a weird position or something, you don't want to have to go taking all these screws back out of it to adjust your shift rod the way it needs to be. So get the gear case in place, put one screw in it. Another good practice is to take a rat tail file and clean all of your bolt holes out. Clean the salt out of there because the salt will get up in there and it'll build up and it'll, it'll uh, encroach on your screw. And uh, many times, this is what's freezing the screw, not the actual threaded portion in the midsection. So clean all these holes out. Clean all the holes in your midsection with the, remember I showed you the bottoming cap. Get a 3 8 16 bottoming cap, clean those holes out, and then a 7 16 uh, bottoming cap for the uh, larger screw with the 5 8 head. Um, clean them all out, put it all back together. And um, that's about it, Evan fans.